What's up guys? I hope everyone is staying safe. I wanted to do a really quick high level video on sponsored display since that is the ad type that has probably gotten the most complex in the last few weeks and there's a lot to go over here and I get a lot of questions over this. Now I'm going to try to make it quick to fit into the LinkedIn video time frame so let's see how much I can cover here. Um, to begin, sponsored display is the ad type that typically shows up underneath the buy box. It can populate here, but I believe DSP is going to be a, begin getting preferential placement here. Now, I don't think they're going to get rid of this placement, and I think, you know, sponsored display is still going to be able to win there because they have so much data and they've cleaned up the ad type so much. But uh, as a quick high level, sponsored display is typically only ran in advertising console AMS. It was the product display ads. They have now rolled it out in Seller Central with product targeting. And you have, you know, the audiences versus products and all the different uh, targeting types. So it's definitely getting much better. Um, if it does not have copy, it's typically being ran out of Seller Central, as you can see here. If it does have copy, as you can see here, it's probably being ran out of advertising console slash AMS. That's the only differences in the platform. I'm running off a hunch that when the platforms converge, we're going to have the opportunity to be able to write copy. The biggest reasoning is uh, when you're creating a campaign, creative customization, no. So I'm hoping that there's gonna be a yes there for everyone in Seller Central, everyone 3P, to be able to write copy just because it increases your click-through rate. It looks fantastic, allows you to write a call out, things like that. So if you're not familiar with sponsored display, easiest way to start is with product targeting. Um, this is again, the one that we have the most data on because it's been able to ran forever and it's, it just does fantastic. So if you're new and you start with product targeting, you can target both individual products and categories. We run both of these strategies. So when we go to cate categories, we look at the Amazon suggested list. If it's really clean and really relevant, we're gonna target all of those categories with a probably lower bid because it's gonna be more top of the funnel. You're targeting everything in this category. For individual products, we run multiple strategies here. Uh, one of the main ones is to target all of our competitors, target everyone that's ranking on page one, um, target anything we have a competitive advantage over, target anything we have a higher price point over. We can also target products that can be run in correlation with our product for selling socks, target shoes, that type of thing. Um, one thing to call out, and I'll dive into this later, is your campaign nomenclature gets really important when you're running sponsored display because there's so many different targeting types within it. So I'm gonna dive into that, but keep that in mind as you start looking at all these different strategies. Now, let's say you wanna run audience targeting. This is a little bit more advanced because again, it's a little bit more top of the funnel. It's one of the newest targeting types. It's on platform, off platform, CPM based. So it's pretty cool to run. We have some date on it, but not a ton. Um, audiences, searches, placement on and off Amazon, CPM based. Uh, anyone who searched for keywords relevant to your product is probably going to get this product display ad. Audiences, views, this is off Amazon. Shoppers who viewed the detail page of your advertised product or similar products, again, a fantastic strategy, not a ton of data, targeting still getting cleaned up. Um, one thing to note is they do suggest two advertised products for you. Um, unless your products are extremely, extremely similar, I would be a little bit worried about doing this method because they're going to suggest products based off, um, views. So if you have, you know, a cat toy and a dog toy, you probably don't want those in the same ad because your targeting is going to be a little bit different versus cat owners and dog owners. So we always choose our specific products. And again, we keep it one to one, just like we do when we're running sponsor products. Uh, that way, when we're pulling reports, we can easily see how certain products are doing. We don't combine products there. Purchases. So you're going to be showing an ad to someone who's already purchased your product. If you have a high ticket item and it's not a repeat purchase, it's not something that could be bought in correlation with, probably would not run these. Um, if you have a high ticket consumable item, these are probably gonna do really well. A subscri subscribe and save type of item, probably gonna do really well. If you have products that can be bought in correlation with each other, there's a good chance that you can run these and test them out and they're gonna do well. Um, now that we ran through all of them, again, I had mentioned kind of the nomenclature being super important. 
So this is where it gets really complex. For every individual product, we're gonna wanna run at least all of these separately to test data. So cat toy, sponsored display, product targeting, category targeting. Cat toy, sponsored display, product targeting, product display ad. Um, same thing, searches, views, purchases. So you can have at least five campaigns for one product. Now, I probably wouldn't do this um, for every single product, 80, 20 it, figure out what's gonna be most important. And if you're a little bit nervous about targeting top of the funnel traffic, probably wouldn't run every single one of these. But if you're willing to test and get in there early, this is how I would structure it. Um, again, that nomenclature is gonna be super, super important. Another thing to call out is for product display ads, I have top here because we're gonna target all of the top products. If we're targeting products that can purchase in correlation, again, socks, shoes, I would put that in here because reporting is not super clean on sponsored display yet. So what you're gonna have to do is actually pull directly from campaign manager, export, and then look at the data, which is what I did here. I took out um, the product identifier, but just some quick callouts from the data. Sponsored display, product display ads, product targeting, seems to have a much higher click-through rate across the board. As you can see, 34, 43, 58, um, does really well. We don't have a ton of data. We've only been running these campaign types for this brand for about four days but every single type has driven a sale um, without any optimization yet. So that's really good. Uh, purchases has driven the most orders for orders, but none of them have new to brand because of course the consumer had to purchase our product, purchase our product in the past to get that ad type. Um, once we get more data, I'll definitely dive into this, but a few other things I wanted to mention, be careful with dynamic bids up and down. You may want to set a lower base bid to, uh, Make sure that when Amazon and does dynamic up, it doesn't get too crazy. And then again, one ad group, one product, strictly for budgeting reasons. Minimal products and categories within a campaign, again, so that way you can set the budget um, higher across all the products and categories you're targeting. If you're targeting 100 different categories and your ACOS is a 50%, you're probably got, not going to want to increase your budget. But if you're targeting five categories or even one category and it does really well, you can increase your budget, watch dynamic bidding, uh, lower daily budgets. Some of the suggested daily budgets is typically 100. Would not risk that up front. Um, creative customization, already touched on that. So again, this was super high level. Let me know if anyone has any questions and hopefully this is under the limit for LinkedIn videos. All right, thank you guys so much and have a great rest of your week.